Hey yo there and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to talk about a painter. For the first time on this channel we're going to talk about a famous artist that painted and was very known in New York but was also known in the world and he's become a phenomenon and a cultural icon. Today we're going to talk about Jean-Michel Basquiat. So now between what I knew and what I didn't know I present to you one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. I present to you Jean-Michel Basquiat. Let's get right into it. I, know, I, try to, I like to try to be to remain a little reclusive, a little reclusive, and not be just and be out there, you know, just to, you know to be to be brought up and to be brought down, you know, like they do to, do to most of them. So before talking about a few anecdotes about Basquiat's life, I'm going to talk briefly about his life and his background, actually. So uh, Basquiat was born in 1960 by a Haitian father and a Puerto Rican mother. From a young age, he uh, actually looked very skillful and he was very talented. And by the time he was in his teens, that means like uh, my age, he was already doing graffitis in his city. Under the pseudonym uh, Seymo. Seymo was a pseudonym used by Jean-Michel Basquiat in the late um, 1970s when he and his friend uh, Al Diaz began creating graffiti around New York. That was their um, name, actually. Despite his artistic talent, uh, Basquiat suffered problems in school. He dropped out when he was 17. He then moved to Manhattan in New York where he began to immerse himself in the, the artistic side of the Lower East Side. He made a lot of friends amongst the writers, musicians, uh, painters that were at, in Manhattan at the time. And he began to get some recognition for his style of graffiti that combined words, symbols and images in bold and expressive ways that were seen as brand new. In the early 1980s now, uh, Basquiat began to transfer from graffiti to the art world, showing his works in uh, galleries and exhibitions around New York City. He quickly became known for his raw and emotionally charged paintings that explore themes of race, identity and social injustice. He drew inspiration from uh, a lot of things, a lot of sources like uh, African art, like jazz music, and of course his own personal experience of, of living in a um, multicultural community. Now in the 1980s, Basquiat's rise to fame was meteoric, it was absolu absolutely uh, great and it was so quick. In 1983, he considered it his, um, his best year, where he said that he made some of the best uh, artworks that would ever be made. He became known also for his uh, very big collaborations with his friend Annie Warhol, for example, and they formed a close friendship and uh, partnership. Now, let's get into some anecdotes. If you're ready, let's get right into it. So first, as a child, uh, Basquiat was hit sadly by a car while he was playing um, in the street. He suffered a broken arm and internal injuries, which required him to spend um, some few months in the hospital. During this uh, long time, his mother gave him a book uh, that was Grey's Anatomy, a medical text that actually inspired him in a lot of his future works. So that comes from that book. And I think there are a lot of works that are inspired by that. That being said, three, Basquiat had a very, um, unique and eclectic style. He often uh, wore just a trademark uh, Armani suit. Now, number four. Basquiat's friendship with Andy Warhol was one of the most significant ones in his whole life. And it was a very public one. It was a very uh, famous and notorious one. They first met in 1982 uh, in a cafe in New York City. And after that, they actually collaborated a lot of times. Despite their uh, age difference, they remained friends, even though uh, Warhol died in 1987, just a few months before Basquiat died himself at the age of 27. Now number five, I don't know if you know this, but um, as I said before, Basquiat was friends with a lot of people. He was friends with musicians, painters, poets, writers, a lot of people that were in New York City at the time, trying to create their own name. He was friends with uh, Keith Haring too, as well as Andy Warhol, of course. But in musicians, he was actually friends with um, David Bowie and David Bowie later on played the role of uh, Andy Warhol in uh, the biopic Basquiat that happened like 12 years after uh, Basquiat's death. He also was friends but then more than friends uh, with Madonna whom he dated. Number six, as I said before you maybe know that uh, Basquiat was inspired so by uh, African culture and art but uh, by jazz too and he often incorporated uh, re references to jazz musicians and artists in one painting titled Charles the First. He even included a reference to a song by Polonius Monk. Now, number seven, maybe you might know this and maybe it's uh, quite a predictable one, but Basquiat was a big reader. He loved to read a lot of books, like Grey's Anatomy, like I said before, that inspired him for a lot of um, artworks, but other things too. So he was known for his love of literature, of course. He was interested in the works made by um, authors like William Burroughs, Jack Kerouac and Herman Melville, who were his three favorite authors. 
but he also loved to read comics, which uh, he often uh, integrated into his artworks. So Basquiat was inspired by a lot of things, and he often loved to incorporate these things into his artwork, which is great to see because when you see a ba uh, Basquiat painting, you can actually see um, his references sometimes, and that's so great to see. And number eight, uh, Basquiat spoke three languages. I don't know if you know this, but he spoke English, of course, but he also uh, spoke French, and he also spoke Spanish. His mother spoke uh, Spanish, and his father spoke French and Creole. So he grew up in a multilingual household. Uh, now, sadly, I, as I said before, um, Basquiat died at the age of 27 in 1988, he was known for using uh, too many drugs, for using cocaine and heroin, and he died um, of an overdose, tragically. Despite his short life, uh, Basquiat left behind him so many artworks, uh, and he will stay forever a true legend, and he'll continue to inspire new artists that want to one day maybe make paintings or inspire people that just love artworks. I myself, uh, I really love him, so I've made a few paintings um, that he made, or I did some that were inspired by some of his paintings. I'm going to show you that right now. So, hello there. Go to take the tripod. So, um, in these artworks, uh, the ones that you might see as Basquiat's is that one, which is uh, a warrior with a bone. Now I've done that one too, which is uh, inspired by the devil, by Basquiat, but I actually did uh, the version of an angel. His was very red and uh, quite bloody, and I made a blue one. Now this is actually one where I um, film all my videos normally, but I actually went right there to film these videos about paintings. But there, that's uh, Basquiat, which is named uh, Dustin, if I don't say anything wrong. There's a Keith Haring right there. Uh, that's one, it's not really inspired by um, any artworks of his, but it's uh, a style that looks a little bit like Basquiat. No, no, a few other ones. Royal Liechtenstein, Picasso, Van Gogh. Well, that's it for uh, the artworks. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really loved um, finding all these anecdotes about uh, Basquiat and learning even more about him than I knew before. Uh, sorry for that. Um, I hope that, uh, of course, you love this video. I love making it. Uh, like all of these videos, I'm really appreciating uh, the content that I'm, that I'm finding and I hope that you learned some few things and you had fun. And of course, have an amazing day. I'm sure you will. Bye-bye.